Welcome back, everybody, to this episode of Drunk Bible Study Bonus Edition, where we are talking about Zeke Poo, 36 <laughs> to 38. Aww. Our sweet baby boy, Zeke Poo. <laughs> Gosh. He's not good, very sweet, and not very baby. Yeah. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> he tries. But he is a boy. He's doing yeah. his best. So we, we hit this, this dry bones thing, which was cool. We mm. talked about Gog and Magog. Uh, there was some unwalled villages in the mountains and uh, and some dry bones coming back to life. So we had a lot of questions that we are going to try to maybe answer, but probably just ask more questions in this bonus episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I looked into these unwalled villages and I got to be honest, I was anticipating this would be boring. Oh. It's not necessarily exciting, but it's not boring. Okay. <laughs> it's a middle path. Somewhere in the middle, yeah. How yeah. pumped are you to hear about this? <laughs> I'm so, so, with an intro like that, I cannot wait. <laughs> Let's do it. Well, I first looked at some comparative translations for Ezekiel 38, and pretty much every single translation says a land of unwalled villages. The Bible in basic English said, I will go up to the land of small unwalled towns. And I liked that. thought that was cute. Here's the thing. A lot of people use this part of Ezekiel to generate end times prophecies, interpretations, essentially. Well, Ezekiel's a hot a hot boy for hot end boy. times prophecies anyway. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. Now, a lot of people, I've been on a lot of Christian blogs at this point. Haven't we a all? A lot of Christian blogs trying to wrap their brains around, what could these unwalled villages be? Yeah. Because a lot of people are like, well, it's it's probably trying to be Israel, but the problem is Israel actually has a wall around it now. And that Does is it? true. There actually is a, um, at least for a section of the border, there's a Berlin... Well, mentioned these walls. Yeah. There's like a Berlin wall style wall Yeesh. with the border against... Palestine. Okay. And so everyone's okay. like, but they clearly have a wall. So that's not going to work. <laughs> like, but I like but your it, voice for people who post on the internet. That's because <laughs> that's not going to work. That's wow. not going to work. And so this isn't all going to kick off until Israel's actually an unwalled village. Okay. But then oh, this okay. other Christian blog makes the case <laughs> that America, America. is. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> the land of unwalled villages. Do you want oh, to know why? What? I would love to know why. Yeah. I'm going to read a direct quote. We have the longest unprotected borders of any country in the world and a flood of heathen are pouring across them. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Jeez. Now, here's the interesting thing. After being on so many Christian blogs and so many end times prophecy blogs, the consistent thing is everyone agrees it's going to be Russia. Wait, what? <laughs> everyone, the Ruskies. Everyone agrees Russia is going to be the one to attack this unwalled village. Whether that's oh, Israel. See, wherever it is. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, huh. whether that's... Say something in Russian, Jess. Say, I will attack your unwalled village. <laughs> uh, you know, funny enough, when I lived in Russia, I never had a need to say the words unwalled village. <laughs> So, mm. do you know I will mm. attack? No, I don't remember. Okay. Honestly, I didn't talk a lot about warfare when I was there, so <laughs> okay. Like, these words just didn't come up. I know I know that's weird and surprising. Well, clearly it's a sign that they were really trying to suppress that and keep it secret. Yeah. Mm. Keep it that's safe. why you never had to talk that about them. Sense. This is how conspiracy theories work is they're essentially yeah. unfalsifiable mm. and any evidence right. can confirm the foregone yeah. conclusion. Now, this particular blog that I'm looking at also made the case that Russia is definitely going to go up and over the North Pole in order to get uh, into Canada huh? and the U.S. That's how they're going to do it. What? It's going to be the surprise attack. They're going to go through the, the North Pole. Okay. What, to get to, to which to place? Get there. Anywhere. Canada and the U.S. They got to do Ukraine first, which is what I think they're they're worried about right now. That's the warm-up. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's just the yeah. warm-up. What if cool. wow. Ukraine is the unwalled village mm. and that they're actually the ones we should all be 
you know? Worried about? You know? I don't know. I don't like that because it doesn't really center us as a country. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hmm. You know, right. or, like yeah. we're not really a part of that story. And That's so true. I just don't so think God it's God forbid. That. Yeah, I don't God think it forbid. could be that. Okay. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. That's what I got for the unwalled villages. Can't, I can't argue with that logic. So Gracious. go on. Wow. So not boring, you know? <sighs> no, not boring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, also in Ezekiel 38, there was talk of Gog and Magog. Uh (laughs) So it's interesting. I don't recall this, but Gog and Magog are mentioned in four books of the Bible, including Genesis, Chronicles, which we haven't gotten to yet, Ezekiel, and then also Revelation, of course. Oh. Of course. Yeah. It does show up in Revelation. Yeah. Because it is about end time. Yeah. It's about end time. So the thing about Genesis, which is interesting, the genealogy of the sons of Noah included Magog. Oh, really? Which is in Genesis oh. 10. Oh. Yeah, Genesis 10, rather. Of who's... Uh, so Magog yeah. was a real person b- born after the flood to Noah's son, Japheth. J- Japheth? Japheth. Japheth. That's oh, the wow. one. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And was Japheth cool? Do you remember, Duds? Was Japheth? Uh, I don't remember anything significant about Japheth. Remember, it was Shem, Ham, and Japheth. He was one of the three. That's all. That's literally all I remember. Right, but I thought Ham was the one who got cursed because he saw his dad's wang, right? Oh, God forbid. Yeah, Ham is the one who got cursed. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Well, and Gog's name appears a few chapters in, let's see, the genealogy of Jacob's sons and the forefathers of the 12 tribes of Israel. So it's the sons, okay, the sons of Joel, which it it lists in the families of Reuben. This is in Chronicles, though. So I guess it's a Joel son. Okay, so he may Uh either be related to some descendant of Noah's or yes. related to a descendant of Jacob's, of, it's of as, Reuben's, I guess. Yes, so maybe. Gog was a grandson of someone named Joel, who is a descendant of Reuben, the son of Jacob. Okay. All right. Okay. However... Who in turn was a descendant of Noah, I guess. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But then in Ezekiel, you know, they, they reference Gog and Magog yeah. and essentially say that you know, judgment will happen. Judgment and pestilence will happen upon Gog because of his attacks against Gog's people. But the thing is... Is there God's people or Gog's people? God's. So like, (laughs) because Gog is hurting (laughs) God's people, Uh then we're going to get all up on Gog. Right. And it's going to be a bad time. Yeah. Wow. However, eventually, and I can't wait. I'm so excited about Revelation. Revelation is going, (laughs) they're going to show back up in Revelation. I really hope it's not a disappointment to you. I hope it's not either. But essentially, yeah, I I didn't want to get too far into this, but Gog and Magog are part of Satan's army. That's all I'm going to say. They're part of Satan's army. That's cool. How cool is that? Wow. And then also, (laughs) both of these people show up in a bunch of different places. So Ezekiel Chronicles, and then also in the Quran. Oh, They also show up there. Okay. And apocalyptic literature. Yes. Cross-reference. Yes, exactly. And then here's the last thing that I wanted to say. One of the most important legends, this is from Britannica.com. One of the most important legends associated with Gog and Magog was that of Alexander's Gate, said to have been built by Alexander the Great to imprison these uncivilized and barbaric people until the end of time. In medieval legends of Antichrist and the last emperor, Gog and Magog were allied with the armies of Satan. So in various prophetic texts, Gog and Magog participated in the persecutions led by Antichrist. Who's Antichrist? Just Satan? Yeah, I I think so. Well, no, the Antichrist is going to be the person who kind of brings about the end times. I see. Preceded Mm, by Antichrist as a sign of his coming or emerged following the defeat of Antichrist in the struggle prior to the last judgment. So Gog and Magog are going to be there. Yeah, Yeah. really exciting. 
front row yeah, seats, so. Gog and Magog. <laughs> totally. But it's interesting because these this thing brings up the fact that like Gog and Magog in the Genesis chapters are probably not the same people that this Gog and Magog are referring to. Yeah. So it's like, not. as always, you know, there's two or three or four different versions of these people yeah. in this book. Mm. Yeah. yeah, definitely. So just something to be aware of. Yeah. So that's related to the stuff that I was looking into, which is about... Okay. So the whole thing about the dry bones and that he resurrected them by like putting sinew and flesh and muscles and blood back in them and then breathing life into them. Mm -hmm. And it got me thinking about sort of beliefs about resurrection and the mm -hmm. afterlife and eternal life and things like that. And kind of wondering like, what were the beliefs back then, uh -huh. right? Because like we've mm -hmm. talked about how hell isn't really a thing yet and heaven's not a thing. Kind of no matter what, you go to Sheol. That's just mm -hmm. like the place anyone goes when they die. Yeah. So kind of looking into this, and what's interesting is that Ezekiel is kind of right on this cusp of this belief starting to change. And so essentially from what I was finding is that kind of the belief about both like what an afterlife is, as well as this question of, is a soul separate from your body? Hmm. Or is a soul just like it's in your body, but not separable from it? Like your soul doesn't live on after you die. Like it, it also dies with you. But hmm. the soul is like what gave life to your body. Mm -hmm. And so what we kind of saw from this example in Ezekiel was this idea that you've got to kind of, you make the body and then you put a soul in it. Like that wind that he summoned from the four yeah. corners is yeah. kind of what animated it, which was a lot like, uh, we saw in Genesis where he, you know, mm -hmm. made Adam out of clay and then breathed life into it. So it's like yeah. an air of sorts that that makes it live. Yeah. But then we've not had any mention of a soul existing outside of a person's body. That's true. There's no, we haven't really gotten any yeah. ghosts floating around. Other than, wasn't right. there? No. There was a ghost Didn't that Samuel so, talked was there to. Ghost? No, was wasn't it or, Solomon who tried to, or was it David? One of those Wait, guys to tried to consult the witch of Endor to witch. call up the ghost of Samuel or the spirit of Samuel. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that yeah, happened. You're right. Okay. So that's an interesting one. I'm not I'm not sure about that. That didn't come up in this particular thing. But basically, so I found this thing from Arizona State. Arizona.edu. Oh. Is that Arizona State or is that University of Arizona? It might be University of Arizona. Okay. I don't know, but fuck Arizona State. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> wow. Why? Boy. What happened? Because University of Arizona is in Tucson and Arizona State is in yeah. Phoenix, uh, right? Just rivals. Okay. Rivals. Okay. Didn't okay. live. Sure. Okay. Fair. Bye. Gosh. Jeez. So. Not that I went to either <laughs> school, but whatever. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> so I found this, this article from bibleinterp.arizona.edu called Afterlife and Resurrection Beliefs in the Second Temple Period. So we've talked before about the Second Temple Period because it's when a lot of the books we've been reading were believed to have... It's the University of Arizona. Okay. Well done. Were believed to have been put together. Okay. Right? Like, like kings and all the prophets that we've read were believed to have kind of been written down and sort of assembled and codified during the Second Temple period. Okay. And, and the Second Temple period basically goes from like 500-something BC through like 30 or 60 BCE, right? So like a little bit past when Jesus would have been alive is what's referred to as the Second Temple period. And that basically refers to, I guess, after they'd been exiled and they came back and built temples again, after Solomon's temple had been destroyed. So it's the second temple. And it's kind of talking about how the belief before, based on evidence of the books that we've read, this is kind of making the argument that in the Tanakh, they basically were kind of like, didn't care very much about the afterlife. Huh. Hmm. Like, okay. your life mattered. And like dying a good or bad death mattered and whether your life would get, you know, taken away from you if you were bad and you'd be given a long life if you were good. Mm. Those things all mattered. And like how you treated the bodies of people who died mattered. Because like when we talk about people going yes. unburied, that's bad. Yes. Mm -hmm. Being buried is good. 
and like the the tomb that all the patriarchs were buried in that he bought fair and square. Let nobody exactly. nobody think that it was given to him for a cheap price. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, that all of that. So it's like that matters. But kind of like what happens after it seems to not. It's like when you die, you're just dead. Fascinating. And wow. that's it. And you live on through your descendants, but not right. like as a soul that keeps living. That's but, such a different idea than what we have now. It's absolutely. really, really interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder when that changed. Well, according to this, in the Second Temple period is when it started to change. Ah, uh, okay. okay. One of the arguments for why is that before that, there's this belief that you get rewarded with long life for being good and your life's cut short if you're bad. But right. we went through 70 years at least of the, quote, good guys Mm. getting the short end of the stick, being enslaved, being killed, and the, quote, bad guys living fruitfully and wonderfully. And so the idea is that this started to bring about this question of like, uh, well, that Mm. doesn't add up anymore. And Mm. And that combined with potentially influence from other religions around them may have started to lend more to this idea of a, of an afterlife, which Mm -hmm. still may have been like, someday we're all going to get brought back to life in our physical form and good things are going to happen to the good people and bad things to the bad people. Or, and then later on, this idea of it's sort of a soul in like an other place that's not here on earth. Okay. Potentially. But the the idea is that that maybe came about through this like, hey, life's not fair. Aha. This might equalize it. If there's an afterlife, whether it's on earth or not, where God then gets to kind of pass judgment and and reward the people who should be rewarded and stuff like that. Fascinating. That, wow. Yeah, that's really yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. And kind of what they were saying is that there's really no mention of resurrection in the Old Testament at all, except yeah. for uh, Daniel, actually. So when we get there, we can, we can talk about that a little bit more. Wow. Huh. It's kind of like one of the only explicit references to resurrection at all. Um, and of course, all of this is hotly debated, right? Like, oh, naturally, yeah. Once this belief in a soul came to be, you know, the in the Mishnah and stuff, the, you know, the rabbis were like, anyone who doesn't believe in a soul doesn't get resurrected. Mm. Like anyone who doesn't believe this has been in the Bible the whole time, you don't get resurrected either. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, anyone who follows Epicurus, you also don't get resurrected. <laughs> yeah, you know, they had a bunch of... Epicurus, not Epicurus. Epicurus, oh. sorry, yeah. He's a, a Greek philosopher. But Got it. Apparently, okay. if you were into him, also no resurrection for you. No. Nah. So. Okay. That's funny Got because it. he was super chill. Well, that, I, I mean, clearly, it's too chill. It's Maybe like, no, no, no. Epicurus' whole thing was he's like, I'm going to make a school. We're going to live outside the city. I'm going to invite everybody, slaves, women, former prostitutes, and mm. everyone's going to come to my school and we're going to learn about friendship. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So see, yeah. way too chill for these folks. Yeah, right. for sure. Gosh, so this this comes from some rabbinic writings. It says, all Israelites have a share in the world to come. And these are the ones who have no portion in the world to come. One, he who says the resurrection of the dead is a teaching which does not derive from the Torah. Two, that the people who believe the Torah does not come from heaven. And three, an Epicurean. <laughs> Those are the okay. three. <laughs> wow. Uh, oh, Shoot. that's a little sad. Yeah. I yeah. mean, whatever. It ha- happens to everybody who's counterculture, right? I guess. I mean, this was just one writing. Maybe this person just was really uptight and had a beef with that. So, <laughs> I who knows? guess. My goodness. Maybe Ep- Epicurus, you know, stole his girlfriend or, you know, something like that. Or, sure. Probably yeah. his girlfriend was like, I just, I just feel like I really need this. He's a lot more right chill now. than I you. a little time. And, yeah, like park. Get the heck out of here. <laughs> get, like, give notice you I don't want you anymore. Shamey and mm, yeah. I just don't think, you know, that just bothers me. Yeah. Toads. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, wow. we're we're here. We're at a turning point where the, we the are. beliefs are going to start changing from here on out, friends. We're going to wow. start interesting. Gonna start developing resurrections and afterlives now. <laughs> wow. I can't. I can't even imagine. But I mean, I guess that's where we're at, and it'll be interesting to hear all about that. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. Well. As always, such a fun time exploring this thing called the Bible. 
We can't wait to explore more next week and we'll see you then on more Drunk Bible Study. Thanks.